Tonight I'm going to speak about my animals. And don't forget the Bible Club this week. Uh, Friday night, what's happened on Friday night? It's like Christmas. I've cried at five more sleeps to get ice cream. It's so exciting. And I'm going to be here really early on Friday and, and I have to sample them and taste them. So Friday night, but please make an effort to send children out to the mission this week. It's a really exciting time for the church, for Dungannon, uh, to bring them in. And if you just bring them into the door, my responsibility is to uh, preach the word of God to the children. It's what we do, but salvation's off the Lord. It's nothing to do with me. It's God moves and touches the hearts. But if children aren't here, they can't hear the word of God. So please pray about that and do what you can to fill this house with precious little children. Little adults for whom Christ died. It's a wonderful thought about that there. Right, who's going to give me an animal? Oh, look at my animal here. I'll give you, anyone know what this is? You sure? It's definitely not a goat. It's a sheep. It's a white sheep. It's actually a lamb. And I thought out of all the animals in the Bible, the lamb is probably mentioned the most often. The Bible's full of shepherds. There was Joseph was a shepherd. Moses was a shepherd. Uh, Jacob was a shepherd. And the Lord Jesus, John the Baptist said, Behold, look, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. And every time you see a wee lamb, pure little lamb, skipping little lamb, full of life, it reminds me of children, full of life. And then when they come a big sheep, the sheep doesn't really run about the way we lambs do. So children are little sheep. Children, sh lambs are little sheep. Children are little adults. Full of life. And I thought the Bible pictures a lamb. That, that'll bite you. <laughs> He's all right. Here's a wee lamb. And I thought this wee lamb, even Abraham and Isaac, they moved. Abraham had to choose a ram, a sheep. And it was a picture way back then of a sacrifice. And that, of course, was the Lord Jesus, whom John the Baptist spoke about, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. It's pure. It's white. Whenever they had a sacrifice, an animal, no cuts, no bruises, no marks, as pure as possible. And that was to picture the Lord Jesus, absolute perfection. God's perfect Son uh, went all the way to the cross for my sin and for your sin. Somebody says, what must they do to be a Christian? To be saved, well, the first of all, you've got to admit you're a sinner. No matter how good you are, how beautiful you are, how perfect you think you are, we're all born with that sin. It's called original sin, and it must be taken away. That's my lamb, snake. Do you know what this one is? Do you think it's real? If you fall asleep and this wakes up beside you, why will you jump really quickly? Because you think it's real. This is one of the first mentioned animals in the Bible. It's called a serpent. I understand a serpent's a snake. Whenever Moses was going through the wilderness, the people were so disobedient, full of murmuring, complaining. God sent lots of these serpents, and they were biting the people, filling them with poison, and they were dying really quickly. So God, the people said, Moses, do something. So Moses prayed, Lord, do something. And God told Moses, this was quoted tonight in the book of John, he said, get a pole, get metal out of brass and make a brazen serpent, put it up on the pole and tell the people to look to it and they shall live. If they don't look to it, they'll die. The same way the Lord Jesus, that was a picture, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And if we don't look to the Lord Jesus, if we don't trust in him, ask him for forgiveness, for salvation, we can't be saved. And you might think this isn't real. You ready? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I wasn't meant for you. Sorry. Sorry. I've never done that before. Sorry. I was just making sure that you know it could be real. This is a big snake. No, they're normally not that big. It's a big serpent. So if you fall asleep, somebody's going to tickle your ear. And it's not going to be me. That's the serpent. Many times the Apostle Paul was in a shipwreck. And all the prisoners, there's only 300 of them. And he said, don't escape. Swim to the island. And whenever they all swam to the island, they were cold. And they let a wee campfire. And whenever they let a fire, Paul was putting sticks into it. 
and a serpent jumped out of the, of the fire and bit him. And everyone said, why is he not dead? It's a viper poisoning. But he shook it back off him and explained he was a child of God. He wasn't a God, he was a child of God. And I think over half the islanders believed in the Lord Jesus because of Paul's faith in the Lord Jesus. So whenever you think a serpent, think most of all about sin coming into the world when God made Adam and Eve absolutely perfect, perfect, perfect man and a perfect woman. God made Adam out of the dust and he noticed there was a, a male and female elephant, Mr. and Mrs. Kangaroo, Mr. and Mrs. Buffalo. And he said, God, why is there just me? What did he ask for? What did he ask for? A wife. So God put him to sleep and God takes a rib from Adam's side and there he makes a woman. It means taken from man and he, make, he makes a woman. So I thought to myself, God give them one rule. Don't touch of the one tree. If you touch it, you'll die. You'll bring death into the world. You don't touch it, you'll live forever. Absolute perfection. And of course, the devil comes along in the form of a serpent, tempting, saying, why did you touch the tree? Oh no, we're not going to touch it. Why not? God says, don't touch it. Why? He said, if you touch it, we'll die. No, that's not true. Devil said, father of lies. Remember the devil is, if you touch it, you become wise just like God. So Eve, Adam and Eve are tempted. They give in to the temptation. And Eve goes over and takes the fruit. Nothing to do with the fruit or the tree. It's a disobedience. Disobedience. And he disobeyed God. Took of the fruit. The Bible says, as we one man centered into the world and death by sin. No matter how beautiful a baby is in this world, you got to look beyond that, right into your heart. Is that original sin? But yet God so loved the world, the Bible says he gave his only begotten son, his little lamb, the perfect one, to take away your sin. That's why little children come to Jesus. Little children get saved because they realize once they understand they've got sin, they want to call upon the name of the Lord. But they've got to admit they're sinners before that. Have you any other animals, boys? Fox? <laughs> the farmer's, the, the chicken farmer's friend. Does hens like foxes? No. This wee fox is very crafty. Lovely little creature. Nice and red. You'll see him just looking. Ears are listening. You think that's a lovely photograph of an animal. But then when the wee animal, when I was a wee boy, we sang the chorus, the devil is a sly old fox. If I could catch him, I'd put him in a lock him up and throw him away there for all the tricks he's paid on. For I have salvation. I have salvation. I have salvation. I'm trusting in the Lord. The wee fox is watching. He knows where the hens live. And he's wondering, someday the farmer's going to forget to put those hens in. Someday he's going to go to a chip shop and he's going to get chips and he's going to come home and sit down and fall asleep and forget to lock the hens in. That's the night I'm going to come. He's watching and he's waiting. And you can be sure from experience, the day you forget to lock in your hens, Mr. Fox knows all about it. And the next morning when you wake up, it won't be hard to catch your hands. Because you count your hands. There are no eggs, no hands. Mr. Fox has them. Not just one. If there's ten, they're all gone. Mr. Fox. Solomon talks about foxes. Samson talked about foxes. Samson had a problem because he was just married. And he took away his wife and remarried her. The Bible says he caught 300 foxes, tied their tails together, sent them into the barley fields, and he made the Philistines so angry, they sought his life, and they eventually got to him. Solomon said, be careful of the little foxes, because they spoil the vine. A vineyard's full of grapes. The wee foxes come along, and they take off the grapes, spoiling the vine. And for me, these are little habits, or little sins in the life. Sin's a very serious thing, a very real thing. No such thing as a big sin or little sin or a big lie or little lie. They're all lies, all sin. The Bible says liars are without the kingdom of heaven. God hates liars and people who tell lies. The devil's a father of liars. And Solomon says the little, the little foxes, they're the little habits, saying bad words, taking God's name in vain, skipping Sunday school, skipping church, 
been cheeky to mommy, daddy. Little ones become bigger and bigger and bigger and they get a grip that's stronger and stronger and stronger until they become strong foxes. Big habits. Big habits are very hard to break. Little habits are easier to break. When you know it's a habit and you know it's sin, you got to break it. That's why little children, I would encourage you to come, put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus when you're young. When little sins and little habits are easier to control, when you get older and bigger, they're big and they're tough and they're hardened. The Bible talks about your heart is soft. As you get older, the, hard, the soft heart becomes harder and harder and harder until it's almost impossible to break. God can break it, of course. But watch out for little foxes, the little sins. What else? Fox's best friend. Chicken, just born this morning. One day old, the wee chicks. And I thought, can you make a chick? When I was in primary school, I made a wee yellow chick. I thought, that's amazing, that. But I never made it live. I could make it yellow. I could make eyes and wee wings. But when I made a noise, it never moved. And these wee chicks are one day old. And that's what they look like. And when the mother hen cluck, 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 calls them, they can hear. The hens have ears. I can never find a hen's ear. I looked and looked for it, can't find it. But when they call cluck, 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 the wee ones understand. And they come running for protection. And she lifts up her wings, covers them in. I remember hearing a story about a big hayseed going on fire. And whenever the hayseed was on fire, the farmer came out the next morning almost in tears. He lost everything. And he's moving, he walked in amongst all the, the, the ashes and the bits that weren't burnt, and he finds an old hen, just a skeleton in a frame, and he just kicked it with his foot, and I'd come running the wee chicks. The hen had protected them and gave us life that the wee chicks could live. Lovely picture of the Lord Jesus. Do you know the Lord Jesus cries? One day he was looking over Jerusalem, the big city. He began to weep, began to cry, and he said, the people are walking by. And it's like a hen gathers its chicks. Come. The wee ones run as fast as they can. The dust flying everywhere to, to get under the wings for safety. And the Lord Jesus says, little children, come unto me. And he says to the parents, become like little children and come unto me. I want to protect you and look after you. And, but I want to save you. Then you can hear my voice and, and understand and recognize my voice. So when I called you, and speak to you, you'll know it's me. And the wee hen gathers the chicks, and they come running. We chicks don't drink milk, but they, they know when there's food, she goes cluck, cluck, cluck. They know the mother's voice to feed them. And I thought, what, what a wonderful picture of nature. That's my hen. Do you know what this one is? What's that one? He just had some of that chicken earlier on. He's still settling down. He, he, he enjoys barbecue, something shocking. And here's my bear. Do you know bears are, all these animals are mentioned in the Bible. The Bible's a wonderful book. In this story of Elijah, Elijah had gone to heaven. He'd gone to heaven. And Elisha was a new prophet after Elijah. And he's walking about and everyone's looking for Elijah. And he says, you're wasting time. He's not here. He's gone to heaven. And people started to laugh and make fun of him, especially children. 42 children began to mock Elisha and said, Go up thy bald head. Go up thy bald head. Is it okay to make fun of people? It's not, sure it's not. They were mocking his head and mocking what he said about God, Elijah's in heaven, which is true. And he never stopped. And he said, If you mock me one more time, I'm going to tell the bears to come out of the forest. The bears are going to come out of the forest. Do you believe me? Excuse me, could you let the bears in, please? Ha, 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 I got you. The two big female bears come running out of the forest and chased them and caught them and with their big claws tore the children. And all the villages round about learned their lesson never ever to mock people, especially children of God. And they learned a lesson never ever to do that, to respect and obey and honor the God of heaven. That's the bear. David, do you know he fought with a bear and he killed the bear with his bare hands? 
God gave them the strength to do that. Why? Because he was protecting his little lambs, his little sheep, and he was able to do that. That's the bear. What about this one? I'll give you, see you can guess what that is. What is it? It's a calf. It's not a cow. It's a baby cow. It's a calf. Are calves mentioned in the Bible? Yes, they are. Do you see whenever a mommy cow, a cow, a mommy cow, a cow has a baby? Is it okay to go and play with a calf? Mommy cow's going to chase you. I'm going to headbutt you and you'll probably end up on the top of the tree. You don't want to play with a wee calf when mommy cow's there because she's going to protect her little calf. She'll do anything. Whenever you're helping to give birth to a calf, you need to run out of there once it's born. Mommy gets up. She's going to find her calf, lick her little calf, and you don't want to be near there or your life's in danger. But in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it talks about two wee calves. They were just born. And you don't want to take a mommy cow away from her calf. She's not going to like it. She's going to roar and moo and moo and moo for a long time. But God says, I'm going to take these wee calves away from them. And I'm going to put a cart onto two cows. And they're going to walk on a straight line the whole way to Israel with a cart, with the ark and the covenant. And it's not allowed to fall off. They're going to walk straight, not run, not turn, walk. And the wee calves are going to call after their mummies. The cows naturally will just do anything to turn around, run back to feed their little babies. But if they don't, God's in this. So they took the calves off the cows, they tied the, the cart onto the back of them, then they said, start walking. And the wee calves started to roar, Mommy! 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 After the baby, after the mommy cow! The cows never even looked back. They never moved back. They never roared after the calves. They just walked straight that's not natural. Nature teaches the calf will roar after the mummy and the mummy will call after the calf. It's human nature. A cow will break any fence to get to its little calf. But those mummy cows just walked because God was controlling the very mummy cows and the calves and the foxes and the chickens. Amazing stories in the Bible. Here's this wee calf. What's this one here? Does the Bible talk about eagles? I'm going to read a verse from you in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their, they shall mount up with wings as, they shall run and not be, they shall walk and not. That's the eagle. I read this about eagles. I love to have to study birds. These big, strong birds. Do you know when an eagle wants to find a, a, a hubby? A female wants to find a hubby? She puts him to the test, and she carries a stick up into the sky, and she drops it, and she says, go and get that before it lands in the ground. And the big daddy eagle wants to show his big muscles, the power of the strength of his wings, whoom, and he needs to get it before it hits the ground. Then she'll do it, test him again, a little lower, a little lower, and if, she, if he passed that test, they mate for life. That's eagles. But if he doesn't catch it, he's not fast enough, and for her, that's her little eaglets. If they ever fall, he needs to be there to protect them. Even nature teaching about the family unit, protecting, protecting the little ones. This eagle's got one enemy, another bigger bird starting with C. It's hard for me to say that word. It's a big word. But this Big bird will attack the eagle. So what does the eagle do? It, it finds the sun, and it, it flies toward the sun. Its eyes are so sharp and so powerful, it can fly right into the sun. The other birds get dazzled. It can't blind it. It can't see. Therefore, the eagle escapes. Do you know the eagle can, fights with a snake? On the ground, the snake will surround the eagle and kill the eagle, but the eagle lifts it with his claws and takes the eagle up into the air, High, 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 and lift it up, and it drops it. And of course, the snake's dead because it's so high up. The eagle's very smart. She takes her battles into the air. That's a picture for Christians praying. Whenever you're battling, don't fight with the devil here on the earth. He's too strong. He's too powerful. Take your battles to the air. Take them to the Lord. The eagle's a wonderful bird of prey. 
And I thought, so many lessons from the big eagle with a wingspan of maybe seven meters. They're so, so big. That's the eagle. Another wee bird. I don't even know what this one is. Oh, no, it's a bird. It's not a duck. That's a raven. Do you know the song, the raven's wings went flap, flap, flap? Down to the river they flew. Who's got a nice raven in their garden? Most people don't. You might have a wee robin or a sparrow or a green finch or a blue tit. Not ravens. You might want to throw a stick or a stone at a raven because they're thieves. They steal the other wee bird's food. They lay their eggs in other bird's nests. That's the type of bird that's a scavenger bird. That's the one Noah let out of the ark and it didn't come back. It was just eating of the dead flesh. But Elijah challenged the king and said to the king, why are we not allowed to pray to God? And because of this here, God turned off the rain. He hid Elijah behind a tree for two years. And every day for two years, God sends a raven with bread and meat and a famine. Fresh bread, fresh meat to feed Elijah. And I thought, if God can choose the raven birds, what can he not do with one of you? Some people think God just loves the little beautiful chicks or the little big strong eagles. And he doesn't like me because I'm not as good I'm not as smart. I'm not as wealthy. I'm not as good looking. All these things. But boys and girls, remember, when God looks down tonight, God is no respecter of person. He doesn't have favorites. He doesn't look and say, you have a nicer dress. Your tie's longer. Your hair's longer. He says, little children, give me your heart. Give me your life. And I thought, if the Lord could love the raven and use the raven... What can he not do with me or you? I remember sitting in church and the Lord speaking and calling and challenging. And I thought all these intelligent people, school teachers, business people, people who could just speak so fluently. But the Lord says, no, I'm going to use the foolish things of this world. The despised. And I thought in the Bible, God uses a raven. Despised. Not many people like it. Farmers shoot the crow. They shoot their crow. That's what they do with it. Yet God uses it. What else have we got? To f- oh, there we have we something to eat? Oh, leave it. That's not the last one. The last one. No, tell the truth. What is it? No, no, tell the truth. What is it? What? A cub. Cubs don't have beers. Is it a mommy lion or a daddy lion? It's a big daddy lion. Look at the big beard. King of the jungle. When these lions roar, you can hear them five miles away. He's letting everyone know, I'm the king of the jungle. The other animals fear the lion. He's ferocious. He's a champion. And I thought, David fought with the lion. Samson fought with the lion. All these wonderful Bible stories. But the Bible says the devil goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Devil doesn't eat people. What does he do? He distracts people. His job is to keep you away from God. See, the moment you're born into the world, you're born with sin. Separated from God on the devil's side. Jesus calls. He wants you. He wants to save you. All these things. But the devil says, just leave it. Just leave it. Wait till you go to big school. Wait till you start working. Wait till you get married. Wait till you're older. Until you, until you wait too long, you leave it too long. And I thought the lion, he's a champion. The Bible also talks about the lion of Judah, talks about the Lord Jesus. All these things, so many stories in the Bible with these animals. And I thought the devil in the fox, the devil in the lion. And the fox will do anything to get the hen. No matter how cute he is, he's sly. No matter how strong he is, the Bible talks about the God of this world. We can't fight against the God of this world. He's too strong. But remember, when you become a child of God, when you become a Christian, the Lord lives in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And most people say, I can never become a Christian because I can't keep it. You don't keep it. The Lord keeps you. Um, All things pass away. All things become new. You become a living child of God. And he helps you and guides you and directs you. That's why when children have an appetite to learn about God, feed them. Children, if you love learning about God, learn as much as you can and build your wee muscles up in your heart. And when you grow older, you'll be able to withstand and fight against the evil one 
as a devil. So whenever I think about all these animals in the Bible, so much to learn about God. And I just absolutely love them. But if you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, think about these animals beautifully created by God. But animals don't have a soul. Animals can't go to heaven. The Bible says dogs are without. They can't get to heaven. They don't have a soul. They're animals. They die and they go into the ground. But children, adults, we have a soul to be saved. And the Lord Jesus is interested. You can't get saved once you die. It's too late. Once you're alive, you must call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to forgive you, to save you, and live your life for him. But don't miss your opportunity. Hundreds and thousands of little children in Poland and Ukraine tonight would love to hear about the Lord Jesus. But there's nobody to tell them. They're growing up without hearing the gospel. And this is another opportunity for you to hear the truth of God's word, whereby you must be saved. What did Jesus say? You must be born again. Born once into your mommy's family, then you've got to be born again into God's family. Do you think? Who wants a lion for a prize? No harm wanting. I'm just testing your ears. They're working perfectly. Thank you. But we will have prizes this week, but not the lion. Let's all pray. Father, we thank you tonight for your goodness and your love. Well, thank you, Lord, for all the children gathered here tonight. Well, thank you, Lord, for the moms and all the dads and all the friends that have come along to this special meeting for children. Well, thank you for the wonderful time of the children singing and reciting scripture and playing instrument or playing the piano. And Father, we do pray you'll bless this night. But more than anything, Father, will you speak on to the hearts of the boys and girls and moms and dads and help them to understand the importance of getting right with God and putting their trust in the lovely Lord Jesus and having their sins forgiven. In your name we pray. Amen.